Now is your time to flash. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 13th floor where the furniture is always the best, but the views are amazing. I am your moderator, B. Jones, and I am joined by Crypto Fresh, DJ Barry B. Fresh, the man in cryptocurrency. What's happening, bro? Man, I had to wear my red today because it was a bloody market. It was a bloodbath. But mm. you know, we stand strong, we huddle fiercely, and we ain't scared of nothing. Uh, but we here, man. I'm still excited. We still on this crypto. Nothing changed. Let's get it. Ain't nothing changed. I'm going to ride this thing on out. <laughs> Mike D, what's happening, bro? What to do, bro? What to do, fellas? Everything good, people? Try to get over this cold. Mm. Mm. What you got for him, Faison? You the one with the uh, natural remedies, man. What, we can, what, what can we do to help that out? Ginger. Uh, ginger, get it juice. Ginger, get it uh, in your tea and some lemon. That's the best natural cure you can do. Like ginger root? Yeah, yeah. Like go get a juice or just put it in tea. Like grind it up and put some tea in the or some hot water and just sip on no, it. Ginger, a uh, uh, redhead. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but do not, ginger ale is not ginger. So don't, don't fall for the scam. <laughs> that no is just, that, that, no that is juice uh, corn would, syrup. That's straight. Is that syrup. ginger in here? <laughs> now, yeah. if you go get you some reeds, now that's yeah, that's yeah. Or there's there's some there's some cool like Jamaican um Jamaican ginger uh like little pop yep. things. You can yep. get Walgreens or CVS yeah. or any pharmacy. Um, they're pretty good. But yeah, you gotta go with the ginger. Right now, I'm drinking. You can see it on the screen. I'm drinking my ginger tea right now. Um, so yes, get ginger. Great for curing before and after. Yeah, you're gonna have to shoot me a recipe on that so that way I don't uh, mix too much or not have enough. Yeah, ginger can burn you. <laughs> you can go the wrong way with ginger for sure. <laughs> I'm trying to mess that up. Last but not least, also on the natural remedies, Coach K. What's happening, bro? What's good? I'm doing the same thing, trying to get over this flu slash cold slash gray plague, whatever it is. <laughs> gray plague? That's what they're calling it yeah, now? Everybody's got I call, it. I always call it the gray plague. <laughs> Where did that Leave come from? Leave it north. Leave it all north. <laughs> <laughs> I call it that. Just come down here. Yeah, man. We'll get you some coconut oil and a, and a Guinness, man. That's the, that's my flu shot for the year. Now, the Guinness I, I haven't uh, incorporated, but you definitely know I'm on the coconut oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and get you the Guinness. So you, you coconut so oil. yeah. All right. So coconut oil is a bunch of things. It's antifungal, antimicrobial, antivirus, a bunch of stuff. So what you do is you take a tablespoon of it, um, and if you can stomach it, you take it up to three times a day, or, or rather every two hours. Um, if you can't, then you know take it once in the morning, once at night. But basically. Uh, coconut oil has kind of what breast milk has, uh, lauric mm. acid. And because of what coconut oil is, it can actually, um, it can shoot, it can, it can get through the protective lipid shell of the virus because each virus has a, a, a lipid coating around it to protect it. Coconut oil can actually break through and penetrate it and then it kills the virus. Yo. Wow, yeah. that's pretty awesome. I can't stand coconut, but I'll stomach it for <laughs> to get rid of this cold. It really doesn't taste like much. If you go ahead and heat uh, it up. Coconut would, tastes like coconut. No, coconut does. <laughs> the coconut oil. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Hey, Fresh, I think uh, Mama G got you because we can't hear you at all. But um, not to cut you off, but she cut you off. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Still yeah. Work. She and we can't hear you. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, coconut oil. I've been on that for a long time. If 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 you get a chance, there's a book called the uh, the Coconut Miracle. Mm. Um, it talks about everything that coconut oil is good for. Oh wow! Well, I, I know breast milk is good for for like my my son Nandi had an ear eye like irritation, just a little shot, could run up in like two seconds. But that was from a doctor telling us to do that. So yeah, that's crazy. That it's same same thing. Coconut. That's awesome. Yeah, and then uh, in uh, populations where there's a heavy uh, coconut uh, presence in their diet, a lot of the diseases and things that exist in other parts of the world don't exist there. Dang, man, I I just, I, I can't stomach coconut, but I'm going to have to just deal with it. Is there a way to get coconut without coconut taste? That's what I'm trying to Not tell really, you, bro. Because you have to get the, you have to get virgin unrefined. Trader mm -hmm. Joe sells it. Nice little jar. Check Instagram. I think you like it. It's right there. You heat it up. 
mm-hmm. and then take the Guinness shot right after it, I promise you, you're good. You're never going to taste any It of doesn't that. have that strong oh, okay. taste. Okay. And it doesn't have a strong taste to begin with. Okay. Yeah. But like also, Fresh just rubbed some coconut oil on his mic and look, I did. Back magic. <laughs> um, <laughs> right on the forehead. <laughs> on the mic, we good. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, I, I replaced my lotion with coconut oil miracles. In Florida? It's like I Vaseline. Can't do oil over lotion, man. Like, Ooh, I yeah, no, nah, where you have to, A, you have to do it, apply um, after you shower, before you get out of the shower while you're still wet. Right. And don't and don't, but I'm telling you, it will change your life, bro. Yeah. So, so coconut oil, life. ginger, yeah. like and Guinness. Guinness. Yes. Stout. Turmeric. Guinness. Extra stout. Turmeric. Mm. So extra stout, Turmeric. Guinness, extra virgin, coconut oil, ginger root. And just a regular old lemon. Extra turmeric. Yeah. Like turmeric. Yeah, oh, turmeric's that. awesome. Uh, yeah. What's the disclaimer? We we yeah. do not claim to be doctors here on the right. 13th floor. We just yeah, slept we a holiday in last night. Please consult with local <laughs> for local <professional> remedies. <laughs> <laughs> has nothing to do. <laughs> easy, easy. Hey, man, it's MLK week here on the 13th floor, man. We had MLK uh, day yesterday, but we celebrated all week long, man. Um, and really, I want to get you guys' thoughts, um, not only on the progress that you guys uh, feel have been made, but it's been some other things surrounding MLK and particularly his family members that have been newsworthy. I don't know if you guys caught it where his, um, well, 45 named, I think it's a national park after uh, Martin Luther King in yes. Atlanta, I believe. Yes. And then he had his, <coughs> He did. He did? He did. Oh. Um, he named a national park in Atlanta after MLK. That is correct. Or or, or did he just show up mm. to the thing where they were doing it? No. I he, think they were he, in his office he, or something. Yeah, like that. he signed a bill signed or whatever documentation needs to be signed to officially make it the Martin Luther King Park. Yep. And he had uh, family members there. So I think it was MLK's nieces. Um, on site, photo ops and everything. And they're huge supporters uh, of uh, Mr. 45. And so I want to get you guys thoughts. Well, I don't know if you guys remember, but when they, uh, when he was running, he had MLK the third, and I think his daughter. Really? He invited a couple of them. Oh, yeah. To, to talk with him. Yep. I remember mm-hmm. him, uh, I think it was a Steve Harvey. The kind it was of, around that same time. Around that same time. Kanye West. Yep. Look, I, I, all all of that always goes back to what he was able to put in people's pockets hey i want you guys to talk but of course i'll you know hey hey i'll take care of you though don't worry mm-hmm. about it. you guys come on out here i'll take care of you you guys you know you'll stay at the trump hotel you know what i mean <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that's the way it goes down and i i don't think that it, it's sad that especially uh, a family with a legacy such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s that, you know, this is what it becomes, but. I also think it's leverage. It's leverage. For him, to, right? Yep, to start putting back up the Robert E. Lee statues and all this mm. stuff because, hey, we got statues of King Park. Park. And I'm naming parks after this guy. Why can't I name a park after one of our Confederate heroes. We'll we'll agree to that when he gives the parts at Malcolm. That was going to be one of my questions too, man. We do so That's much right. celebrations of uh, you know Martin Luther King and everything and his legacy, but why not a Malcolm X day? Because because the true Martin Luther King, they've suppressed who he actually was at the time that he was killed, that he was assassinated. Because the reason that he was assassinated. As, as somebody else said, it wasn't because he had a dream, it was because he woke up. I, uh-huh. believe, mm-hmm. I believe Mr. Farrakhan said that, but um, yeah, like he was moving towards something totally different. He was moving towards, okay, this dream I've had, yeah, I realize now that there's some challenges with it, so we're going to do something mm-hmm. different. We're going to do something financial oh. that'll really get some attention, and uh, unfortunately, yep. must. 
Right, man. As soon as you start talking of dollars, and I mean, uh, I think that's it's crazy because he admits it. Like he says it in one of his speeches, and um, I started looking into that. I got a book. Where do we go from here? I think it was the fourth installment of like a uh, five part series of his, but it's supposed to be specifically talking about the direction of the dream and what happened, and you know, obviously where we where we need to go from here. But um, you know, he spoke so much. Uh, about what he called like the triple evils of the world. And it's crazy to me that um, after everything that they went through in the beginning of the civil rights era, um, to see where we are today, I really feel like we're on the precipice of something like really great uh, because there's a lot of activism around everything. I mean, you look at it, you got the Atlanta mayor, the Charlottesville mayor are both black females now. Yeah, Black Lives Matter doing a lot of work in the, in the community. And you have a lot of other pop-ups, um, especially involving our, our young males in the community now. But I think it's, it's really crazy that we're on the precipice of something so great for our community, making those moves, you know, going in the right direction amidst a lot of the same things that they dealt with in the 40s and 50s. Yeah. <laughs> that was gross. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, was, like, what happened? I was like, man, what an amazing. Oh, wow. We lost it there. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that y'all could hear that. So that's what just happened. Because I had my, uh, I thought I was on mute, but I guess not. So I will actually play it if that be the case. Perfect. of the word black. It's always something degrading and low and sinister. Look at the word white. It's always something pure, high and crazy. But I want to get the language right tonight. Yeah, that was a uh one of the post uh, dream speeches towards the end. Mm -hmm. uh, I could have played more, but if you want, we can play some more at the end as we're going out. We can share a link to the YouTube version. Yeah, yeah let's find a link for that uh, That there. But uh, you can hear uh, a lot of Malcolm in that just in those f few seconds, man. You could tell that he was mobilizing and it almost sounds militant. I mean, I just feel like uh, it, it's the energy that was needed at the time, just like that, that same energy is needed now with what we are experiencing, you know, from all of our oppressors and things in the world. Yeah, one of the things that I saw uh, Isaiah Thomas he actually interviewed uh, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X's daughter side by side uh, prior to the Monday night game. And one of the things that Malcolm X's daughter talked about was people always say that my dad and your dad only met once, but nobody talks about how often they talked on the phone. And it was always a point where everywhere Malcolm went, he would always say, make sure Martin knows that I'm here. So even though the people say they only met once, they were in constant communication about what they were doing and how they were moving forward. And even as you hear in that speech, it got to a point where he started to started to come around and started to be like. Right. And I think that might have a little bit to do with the way that people <clears throat> are in history. You know, you kind of learn that they are, you know, they, they contradict each other. So they kind of pit them against each other a lot in history. And when I, in actuality, you know, they were speaking. They started speaking a, a much more similar language as you know the movements and everything started to progress well they don't want to um publicize that unity right they don't they don't want that understanding of wow that real mobilization that real wait a minute you're going to tell me the the gandhi guy and the and you know the super militant guy are about to come together and really be able to make a real movement oh no we right. have to stop this and, and and we don't even want to tell we want to as much as we can kind of diminish the story of thinking that that was possible we don't want the people to think that the bloods and crips can actually you know work together we don't want, that. We want to keep the narrative that you know it was a crazy and evil thing and it shouldn't have been that way american history exactly. man that's how Just like, all half history is washed washed away 
just like Biggie and Pac trying to call the East Coast West Coast feud, trying to call it off. Mm-hmm. Let's have yeah. a truce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh no 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 no! We're benefiting way too much we're from this. Right way too much. You know how much money we make off of this? Are you crazy? Hip hop is blasted. Release who shot you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and then I mean, just think about the the power, man. Like the when you have the that joint force, man. Like it's it's just you can't stop it. And I think the more that we have these things going, like I said, I feel like we're on the precipice of something great. And the more we continue to push, like you're seeing more. <clears throat> excuse me, you're seeing more and more of that each day, each each week. And I mean, you have the the NAACP awards that happened uh, last night, celebrating a lot of these things and getting you know. All of that call to action out there. Um, I know some of us uh, were able to, to catch it, but were there any like surprises on you guys' part when it came to the NAACPs last night? Uh, no, there wasn't many surprises. It kind of flowed through um, as expected. Um, no big random speeches, nothing about anything that's, it's just the, the normal, um, you know, focused, but nothing extraordinary, nothing different. But it was cool that they were able to put it on MLK's day. Um, mm-hmm. So that was a big statement. They, they, they moved around for that purpose. Because normally it's on like a Thursday or a Sunday. So um, that was pretty cool. And to see that it was live and the crowds were all there was mm-hmm. you know, really cool. I, I a, <clears throat> excuse me, were, was very um, interested in who they had running the teleprompter. There were several people who were, uh, you know, reading the teleprompter that there was a lot of issues. <laughs> and yeah, Danny Glover, you know, bless his heart. But man, they they made that man struggle through that speech. So I don't know what's going on with the teleprompter, but I definitely would appreciate if they would get that thing together. I think the, the, the double-edged sword, I'm bringing back a season one term. That used to be my number one term. But the double-edged sword of... Uh, of the awards right is that while it's great it's on tv one i want it on cbs abc yes. mtv right. e, like you want it to be on a uh while i understand the value of having it on you know the the um black network i want it to be on a public platform that is equal to everything else and i feel that it was an eloquent occasion right it was it was great but mm. there was it still did not feel like a show. You know, yeah. it wasn't like like I watched it, but I wasn't, I didn't feel entertained, I guess is the right way to put it. That I, I and, and I respected it. It wasn't like it was a bad show. It just wasn't like, oh, I felt, oh man, I'm waiting for that next year. Right. I felt right. like it was, I felt like it was safe. Yes. <sighs> it, it was safe. Right. But yeah. Anthony, you did a good monologue. I actually he did. It was I, good. I, I, his, the the opening he did a great monologue Anthony um Anderson coming out I, I agreed but do you feel like I think he mentioned Trump like once right mm-hmm. yeah um, he did a whole about three minutes but other Trump. than that I felt like the whole thing through the night was hey let's stay away from anything too controversial mm-hmm. let's not draw too much attention like there was nothing that I felt like okay, if it was on Fox or on CBS or on NBC, there was nothing that I felt like, okay, we educated some folks tonight. Like the right. closest thing to that was when Ava on the day, look, I, I, I've seen her do some stuff that I liked. She needs to probably do more work with Stevie Wonder than whoever she's working with now. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. the song Strange Fruit is already a strange song. It's mm-hmm. weird. Uh, but what it stands for mm. is absolutely a symbol. And I don't know if you guys noticed when she was doing it, they started posting up the names of people that had been lynched mm-hmm. and when they were lynched. Yeah. But it was like three people. Then all of a sudden the camera panned out to something else. And then when they came back, they were done with that part. Yeah. And it was just like, man, why would you, why would why you do that? Show that part. Why wasn't that like all of a sudden the screen should have everybody yeah. at home should have seen that message. Right. See, before you said that, like I was going to ask, do you think it's because of the particular audience? Because as Fresh pointed out, it's not on the national stage. So the audience is going to be predominantly black. So we're catering to that audience and not necessarily feel like you have to make too many bold statements or have to make any too or do too much educating. If well, it's no, on TV, I, they're still watching and it's still mm-hmm. documented and it's still there. I, I think that regardless, <clears throat> excuse me, of it being on that you know major network 
it's still the opportunity to make a statement it's still a message it's still regardless whatever they would have done showing that the um amount of uh attention it would have got in after that you know people would have hey this is what i saw last night on on the awards you know that would have got retweeted and and put on facebook and Mm -hmm. all of this stuff that that ability to make that statement and i didn't even notice that so that's what like the, the 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 fact that Carol is the one who noticed that, probably out of all of us. Mm, I, I saw it. Oh, you saw it? Yeah. Which is why well, we were, we were chit ch- chatting during the uh, during the awards, and I was like, hey, I got a story about that based upon what I saw in the background. Um, and I'm not sure if this is okay to throw into it now, Brett, if you want me to hold on to this later on. But not first, really. it's on a strange fruit topic. Um, so, kind of going back, that it is important that, that, they did this at this audience with this crowd because this crowd need to see that pass um and see the shock value of what it was because now we've been all like last week we talked about h&m how we are like oh no the kids nowadays don't really know they aren't thinking about it but this is an opportunity to say hey this is what happened the people who, who hung these men are still alive today probably so that's still there i'm um, in the background but the lesson that i i learned was when i was performing and 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 and, and performing art school uh, my my uh, choreographer had us come through and do this song. So this strange fruit, I was maybe 13 years old. I had no idea what the song was about. But before I had to learn to dance for the song, I had to watch like the strange fruit documentary, and then that made the movement and the choreography so much more stronger when I was able to perform it because I understood the story behind it. So some of these kids had never heard that song before, and they probably won't hear it again. But if there was some kind of something before that went on, some kind of educational piece, two seconds, and the reading on the screen, and she started singing. That would have been the value or the shock that could have made a difference to that performance because it was it was ran over from that to common to a whole thing that like we kind of lost the importance of Strange Fruit. It should have been by itself. Yeah, it was actually some type of documentary or some type of movement that's going on right now that they were trying to direct you to but i don't know i just feel like they didn't hit that message home it didn't really they they touched it they didn't they didn't drive it right Mm -hmm. well you know the kids probably heard that strange fruit song before man didn't kanye sample that on uh yeah Yeah. swinging um blood on the leaf yeah blood on the leaf Mm -hmm. but they probably don't know that's what it's from yeah right hey but let me ask you guys a question like Just so that award show, I I do agree that it was really nice. It was really done well as far as the attendees. Um, I didn't feel like people were there just for the fashion show. Like they were there Mm -hmm. like, hey, we're going to come here. We're going to be respectful. We're going to show us at our best. Yeah. Um, But when you think about the NAACP, do they still have a place today do they still serve a purpose as an organization at this point? Because whenever there is an issue, you don't hear about them being in the forefront. And that's not to say that, hey, maybe they're not working in the background because maybe they are, and we just don't know. They just don't get any press. They don't get anything. And I is do you think that that is on purpose or has it just lost its value? That's a great question because, you know, that's something that you don't, I never even continue to think it because of the value it had back in the day. You just kind of set it into that, you know, period and don't think about like, yeah, I'm not hearing the, I hear about the war show, but I don't hear when Black Life Matters is is head of the, the news that all of us in the NAACP is standing there like, no, you guys have this situation totally wrong. This is really what it's about, and we stand with them. Like, that is a great question. What do they do right now? What in in? I don't know if it's in the background. I would, I would hope that they would try to be more prevalent. Of you're looking for the advancement of us colored folks. Let's make it be known. And so you have to ring bells with that. It needs to be seen, yeah. understood. It like making those moves in silence is only um helping the problem mm-hmm. i think it's kind of what you were talking about earlier about the double-edged sword because you got the colored people in it so because of that there's so many local chapters and to trying to make that association that you are a part of this and there's so much work that has been done to get away from that label for black people that it's not what label? colored okay like, 
in terms of people now going from African American to this to that. Like nobody wants to associate themselves with being colored and being part of that means you got to be part of the movement. Like that has to do something psychologically with how they've been able to just keep themselves relevant for so long. So I don't know what the NAACP, man, because I think it's a it's become more of a political organization and i think that might be an issue now i might not be the most educated on the workings of the naacp to really answer this question intelligently but to your point fresh you don't really hear about them specifically in front of a lot of things um now i, I was watching the news the other day and a former naacp president i think his name is cornell brooks was was on the news uh cnn talking about trump and his most recent uh, statements um, about the Africans and Haitians and the like, but I, I don't really know because I think um, it, it becomes a almost a, a credibility issue. And then an NAACP doesn't really resonate with me as a quote unquote millennial. You know, like this was a a group of uh, educated black people that did a lot of work at one point in time, but I think it might have faded somehow or another as they continue to progress. And then you have other upstarts or, or Black Lives Matter, like that group resonates with me. And it might be because they're a lot more loud about what they're doing, uh, but it also is something that I grew up to see, not something that my parents grew up to see. So, well, I, I, go ahead. No, I just wanna ask how many, how many of us know someone who's a member of the NAACP one yeah, I do I mean there's chapter I was I, I was doing some fact checking while we were talking to see their chapters and the, their chapters all Everybody, through yeah yeah but they're all like PO boxes so if I wanted to go learn about one I gotta go through a PO box and mail it like why is it so difficult to get to that process so I was just gonna say here's what I think and we've seen this in other organizations that we've interacted with and we've seen this in our communities is it one of those situations where the older leadership of that organization is still trying to hold on and they're not allowing the younger? I, I guarantee I it. I can almost guarantee that because that's yeah. how you come in. The group, a group such mm -hmm. as Black Lives Matter sprout up underneath that because I get to operate in a manner that makes sense to me and not under your supervision or your constraints. So I could absolutely see something like that. The, the, yeah, and, uh, and now that I think about the show, like that would totally make sense. Oh, you could see it. That was an old, it was an old show. Yeah. That statement, yeah. just like you said, but that's, that's, that's one of the biggest downfalls, right? Of that, that community feel is when you get those, the, the, the budding heads of the old and new and the, and the old is, Hey, we've got this tradition and you know, this is what it's got to stand on and the news like, man, but what are you talking about? We're not in the sixties no more. We can, we don't have to wear a suit and tie to everywhere we walk around to, you know, we, we want to be comfortable. No, you got to look presentable because then they're going to put you in the car and then you, next thing you know, you're getting locked up. Like I know all of us talk to our parents and we'll have the stories where they are worried about things that you're like, man, like, well, yes, I'm still cautious, but it's, it's not the sixties right now. Like I can mm -hmm. still, I, I can be a, a, a man and it's okay for me to have, you know, uh, 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 to, to tell a white person, no, I don't agree with what you're saying and it's going to be all right. You know what I mean? But when you grew up in that, you understand where they're coming from. But at the same time, it's that it kills the progress. Right. Uh, right. Even the office here is still in the house. So they haven't even expanded. The infrastructure is not there. So you drive by and look like that's what that is. All right. It's almost like going past the old Hitsville, USA. Like, wow. You look at it and you think they haven't progressed. They haven't caught up to the times. And then you got the Urban League that's sitting over in a million and a half dollar building. So it's just yeah. the catch it up. That's another one. You are so correct. Cause is, there's a is the Urban League is is that uh, a more prominent organization? Because I've heard the rumblings of different Urban League chapters. It was bigger when I was in St. Petersburg for that stint of time. But is the Urban League a more active uh, organization? Not really. Pretty much both are the same. They're more prevalent in terms of things that they do. They've gone more now doing more things in workforce development. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of gotten off into different type of community organizing things. They transformed a little bit, but still their relevance just within the African-American community, both of them are seen as outsiders. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It's not really a cohesive group. It's more the community organizations and the individual civic movements that are coming from the people. Right. So it sounds like to me, it's a, it, it might be a, a simple fix on paper, but I think to to garner that that membership and that activity, you would say that these organizations would need to get a little or a lot more involved with those communities or with those younger with the younger generation to kind of start to get that pipeline. Well, I think we need to not make the assumption that they're not there. We need to more so they need to be more if they are there there needs to be more noise made about it like that it'd be good to to kind of have a better understanding i think it's really um you know it's it's a mind shock to think of really like man i don't know what the naacp does right now i don't know what they've been doing for the last 20 years right right uh, and, and then the other thing is is that for instance like if we all lived in the same city we could say you know what next week we're going to go to this NAAC, the NAACP chapter and we're going to join. And then we just start yep. getting more people to come in. But because the generation that's younger than us, and I would say even younger than you, Brett, that's not on their scope. It's not important because what they stood for back in the day is not what the issue is now. And I, and I, I didn't want to, uh, uh, isolate, I guess, the issue to just the older generation because I think a challenge will go hand in hand to the younger generation to try to find ways to be more involved in, Correct. That, in that right so that their issues and their voice is heard so that we can kind of bridge the gap, you know, it's be that bridge builder, so to speak. Yeah, they've got to make their, good, they good. Have to make their, their issues important right? and bring them to the forefront because I, at some point, um, I think the issues of old and the issues of new, they intersect somewhere at some point. But if we're not having a conversation in one room, we'll never get to that. Well, it's the uh, getting past the BS, that, that initial, you know, um, you're older, so I'm already in a state of, oh, man, you're just telling me some old traditional stuff and not seeing the value in that. But then, oh, you're young and you don't know nothing and not understanding they've had a different experience and have been able to you know, experience things in a different way that they can still teach you. I'm sorry, I cut you off, Mike. No, that's fine. I mean, but I think that was my point when I was going back to the name of it because now the label has changed to now they're millennials. It's LGBTQIA. Like, there's so many other names that go into it that when you bring the name of the organization, you're like, the, you know, color people are like, what are you talking about? That's not me. Like they don't see themselves as a part of it to even want to join to be a part of that. Has the NAACP name ever been well? Has it ever been up for change? Like question to change ever? Can't change. It was it. created. That was at the time of you know it being we were called colored people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was what 60, 70 years ago. I mean, yeah. So I don't think. I think that would change the history of it. That would change uh, the image so much that it would create, uh, I think, a, just a divide. 109 years. Okay, so 109 years, and we're talking about providing, I guess, a catalyst for evolution and transition. Um, I definitely think, especially if we're talking about uh, <laughs> longevity speaking or, or, or forward movement like I think it might be worth consideration it might be worth a conversation but then you get to the point like what do you change it to like do you change I, it to but the, the first conversation is what are you doing that, that will let you know if you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> like I don't care about the name I care about you, how are you funded right now like what's what's going on I, I think that's the biggest story like that's the bottom line is really what the the value was there when um it was a harder fight because the fight is still there right but yeah, it's, it's there. how how what what how are they entrenched because again i didn't see when black life matter was an issue that people were you know the NAACP was there saying no i didn't see when you know people are getting choked out that the NAACP spokesperson is there like hey this is an injustice we do have to do something I didn't see like you know the NAACP coming over there telling him they're not shithole countries. You know, like and here's the thing. Here's the thing. Maybe, and again, it's just their reach is limited because maybe they did have the local chapter 
president or spokesman or chairman pop up at something, but you've got no backing. You've yeah. got their media blacklisted. It's not even their media blacklisted, their member blacklisted. <laughs> <Nobody> <laughs> following said, blacklisted. Like, you know, you got five men right here right now that can't answer too many questions. That's going to be a challenge going forward. I'm going to find somebody to bring on this podcast. I want to, yeah. On the NAACP because we got questions and we want to find some answers. Oh, I think we all know. We all know somebody that probably knows. We just uh, didn't know we were going to be on this today, so we didn't reach out to him. But I guarantee you, Ernest probably knows something about it. I thought about her, but the person I know is old school, like old school. He's the president. He's been retired twice. Ooh, yeah. So, so he he knows somebody, but we're not gonna call him. The NAACP is getting sponsorship from big companies like Wells Fargo, UPS, Comcast, GM, Chrysler. Political. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. Well, they're, they're getting sponsorship from Wells Fargo, UPS, oh, Comcast, GM, Chrysler, J.P. Morgan Chase, State Farm, Comcast. Bank of America. I don't know a Coca-Cola, black person. I hate Black, Comcast, Pfizer, sir. McDonald's, hate Ford, Verizon. Pfizer? Really? Yeah. I mean, all this is See? is write-offs. Say, hey, we we, we give yeah, money no, to diversity. And, and, and so, does it diversity say, write-offs? Hey, what they're doing? Like, what is the mission right now? What? Yeah, is, what's their goal right now? Like, what? Yeah, what, are the, what is? What's what their is, service? I, I can say this because this is uncensored. If you read the list again, you can understand what the mission and the goal is. The uh, goal we, is. Yeah, but we want to see how they say. Yeah, they're. It's not a. It's facts. <laughs> the fact that you are like, hey, yes, we are taking all this great corporate money. <laughs> and that's it. That's what we do. Black life yeah, suit? Yes, right. Oh, yeah. That's what we do. We 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 stay quiet. Yep. That's yeah. that's all that is is a bunch of good hush money. That's what it sounds yeah. like. But hey, you guys go over there, you calm on. them down, take it out the public eye, get them, you know, make them feel good in the back doors of hey, we shall overcome. But yeah, let's try to keep the noise down. Keep it quiet outside, please. We're gonna make it a point to find a dues paying NAACP member to get them on the thirteenth floor. So we can get to the get some get some answers. Get some. One of our viewers is out there. We got a yeah. we got, we got a listener out there. Come on. And then as soon as Ernest Ernest comes off a of vacation, you know, because we we tried to contact him a few times. As soon as he comes off vacation, I'm pretty sure he'll be able to lead us in the right direction. He's somewhere with no radio signals. You think you got Malcolm X inside the NAACP right now? Malcolm X, somebody that's a rabble rouser, is really in there trying to get folks started. <laughs> they oh, there, oh, there's somebody. They I'm sure there, there's somebody in there. They like keeping hushed up in the corner for sure. There's oh, always one. He he's probably in a chapter somewhere, and yeah, they have very little interaction with that chapter. Like they keep telling that chapter they're gonna cut them off. Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. I don't nah, know about that. Nah, Rhode Island. Three hundred thousand dollars for the presenting really? sponsor. <laughs> what? But that's what it's again. Did you find their mission? This man just been going through. Yeah, I about to say. I thought he just been going through the money. Like, <laughs> I'm, fa- I'm, I'm going now. I look. I just went through and typed in NCAA sponsors right, why, and why came you up. Do that. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and congratulate Kay and yourself. I guess on the Eagles' victory this weekend, man. The, the, the NFL fly play. Eagles fly. I don't know. Oh, Sixteen, baby. Well, actually, I know how they pulled it out, but it was it was a really good win this week, man. I want to let, get y'all y'all just do. Um, hey, we appreciate that, man. Look, man, it, Nick Foles. Man, forget Nick Foles. That defense. Oh, absolutely. But we still needed him to. We need him to be a game manager, and not turn the ball over. <laughs> Arch, yeah. you muted yourself. Oh. Listen, any anybody other than Tom Brady right now? Who who else is left? You that's it. Brady, he, he, Brady, he's, yeah. a, he's the last one that's that's won yeah. a ring. Everyone else is new. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, and the crazy thing, three of the four teams are all there for their defense. Like, yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. Minnesota's offense is kind of a little. Stuff so, so defense. everybody, everybody oh. is Ravens championship team with Trent Dilfer. They not even Trent Dilfer. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Johnson. Johnson. Yep. These dudes is Johnny Manziel with a defense. <laughs> you still talking about you still no. talking about the Browns, man? Oh, it's 16, baby. Ah, <laughs> it was Mr. Parade. We're just we're just here for the drinks. <laughs> <laughs> you need to give them to you free. Hey, That's so who y'all who, who y'all picking, man, for the Super Bowl? Given the the four teams now we have Eagles. Yeah, I get. I, 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 <laughs> I say, I don't think that was hard for them. 
I hope Patriots. I hope the Patriots do not make it. They will, but I hope they don't make it. If they do make it, though. I'm calling it upset. I'm. I'm riding. I want. I wouldn't mind having the rematch, but unfortunately, we just don't have the the power to go with their offense. But Mm-mm, I'm calling. No, I don't see the Patriots. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go I'm, Eagles. Eagles. Jacksonville. Yeah, I'm not gonna call it the NFC because I need to sleep at night. So I'm gonna say Jacksonville <laughs> is gonna be for the AFC, and I hope the best team wins in the NFC. <laughs> oh, I really man. wanted to see Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh and Philly. That'd have been an awesome Super Bowl. Okay, go uh, Pittsburgh for you. Um, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I have been You're correct all this season, but I just after watching that Minnesota game, I'm rooting for Minnesota because that was. Like I said, one of the by far the most amazing plays I've watched in real time go down. I mean, and that hey, too many expected. You know, you know what's gonna happen, Miles? It was crazy. Wow. So the funniest thing that happened? Did you see the interview that Josina Addison did with Everson Griffin? I don't know no. who Griffin is. Everson Griffin is like one of the defensive ends. Like this dude is a beast. Like he's oh, okay. just a sack monster. It was a straight Mike Tyson moment. Like she interviewed him, and his first word came out with a lisp, and it was like a high voice. I'm like, oh, I don't know what happened right now. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I think the best moment was watching um, Minnesota's QB. And oh. the shock, the, the like the build up, and he's grabbing people and just but did, yes. but right now this happened. Like just, I love that energy and that 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 moment was great. That I'm I'm rooting for Minnesota number seventy two, Jay Dace's uh, cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you can better believe he's gonna be overly guarded <laughs> in, in Philly. Oh man, yeah, good games, good games. Carol, you was gonna jump in? Nah, man, not at all. Okay. Well, go ahead, man. Uh, phase on. We got to wrap this thing up, man. So I got to give you your moment for the week. We got to get Fresh's crypto moment this week. And then Coach K going to take us home. All right. Mine's is, mine's is again, we're going financial this week. Uh, so drive in expensive cars, but own the best house you can afford. I'm glad you said something about financial, man, because you never answered my question in the group chat, man. You don't own any credit cards? No. Yeah, I do. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I do, but I've been working for the last four, three, four years, getting down to zero. Um, the goal is to be at zero, zero debt. Um, unfortunately, no, you have to have a credit card to, in order to get yourself in the step through. Now, you can go through the back door and get loans and mortgages without credit at all, be zero, but it takes a lot more. It's a lot of underwriting you got to do for that. So having one card that's consistently at a zero balance just to keep your credit score the long one, like don't open up nine, 10 cards get your credit score going up. That's crazy. You got to have one card that you have for many, many years. You just use it for, you no, know, I use it for business. So my car I use for business, I pay it off and it's done. Um, but it's just a struggle because you, the money you throw away paying on stuff is crazy when that money you could have been putting um, somewhere else. And in the next, what, year? The interest rates are going to like double uh, for credit cards and for mortgages because we've made so much money this year. They got to get it back somehow. So it's going to come through, um, you know, the trillion dollars that are out in credit card debts. And I'm just watching it. And every single day in the news, you're probably seeing more and more credit card debt. And this is my debt and credit card. People are living above their means. And it's just because the culture we're in is, oh, well, I'll just charge it and it's fine. Or use my phone, pay for it and it's fine. Um, and it's just, you got to get a budget, man. You got to budget it. You got to make sure you're doing the right thing and just living for tomorrow, not for today. Gosh, gosh. Crypto Fresh, man, we're coming your way. What you got for us this week? Today, uh, January 16th was a, 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 um, this day will be marked in the crypto <laughs> uh, calendar uh, for eternity. One of the largest, actually the largest and most known uh, crypto lending platform known as BitConnect went down today. Um, sit just ripples through all cryptocurrencies. It was a bloodbath today, but it was also a learning experience. Um, we're in this for the long haul. You know, it's going to be a wild ride. You know, Chinese, the Lunar New Year has crypto down as well. So it's been, it's been crazy, but we still here. We hodling with the best of them. I suggest if you are in cryptocurrency, you make sure to hodl right now. Don't get scared. If anything, go ahead and buy you a little bit more, uh, fill up a couple more bags and, and 
we going to sit this thing on out. It's going to be crazy. So how or what do you expect the uh, how you bounce back over this? Like, what, what do you do? Um, my and I need to to coin this phrase, but uh, it's it's stocks, not slots. This isn't you need to get out of the mentality of thinking that this is a one month or two month play or that it's going to be, you know, for a couple of months. This is just like people who are investing in a 401k in my mindset that I'm making investments now that are going to pan out years down the line, two, three years, all of a sudden a coin like Tron, it's going to change um, the way that we interact with each other and the way transactions are made. This is going to totally, uh, like I always preach, it's going to change the way that we interact with each other, how we do transactions, how we live as a people. And it's going to be on a global scale because it's already happening now. So as these technologies and, and um, you know, ways to... Uh, <coughs> Uh, better different uh, industries happen. It's going to, it's going to do nothing but go up. So that's why it's exciting times now. Every year there's been a bloodbath uh, around this time, just due to um, the Asian market pulling out, due to their uh, wanting to get money for their new year and go on their yearly vacations. From what I'm hearing, so I mean, hey, I got my seatbelt on, my bag of popcorn. And, and we're in this thing for the long haul. I'm looking to be telling y'all next year about how we got a um, 13th floor Maserati sitting outside, paid in cash. We're gonna get actually paid in, in Bitcoin. Car. I'm buying a house first. Say, man, get us, get us <laughs> and we're gonna spend that other 200,000 right. on something right. else. <laughs> yeah, Maserati, it's not gonna happen. No. Y'all can't <laughs> tell me, I still, I, I don't have the line, shit. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you now, you you wasting your money. <laughs> yeah, don't go for it on my other team. Come on, man. Don't do it. Get hey, no real problem. quick. Uh, while we're talking about finances, man, just want to give a shout out um, to one of our former guests that we yes. will have do again, uh, Lauren Williams. Uh, check out the Worth Winning podcast. Uh, she has launched her podcast. Uh, one of the first ones was with, was with uh, Clinton Portis. That was uh, very hilarious, quite hilarious, uh, <laughs> but but very informative. Um, check out one of our future guests uh, by the name of Carmen Hendricks. Uh, she has the Honey Pot podcast. Definitely check that out. And um, as I said, we'll have Carmen on the show here, uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So shout out to Lauren. Shout out to Carmen. Um, if you're still looking for that. Uh, entertainment value uh, that game that you can play with your friends and with your family definitely check out tip off tip off download tip off uh, we will be having um, our tip off rematch in the next couple of weeks so tune in for that yeah man I'm um, coming for uh, I'm coming for your head man all right, we'll see. <laughs> I don't want none of the the, the, the black squad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you better you better get some more people. Are we just not gonna end up with the church joint. That's all it was, man. Too many heathens on the podcast. That's all it was. Uh, okay. <laughs> I want to say, ask me when's the last time I've been to church. What? Yeah. Hey man, tip off is doing big things though, man. I've tried to uh, play that joint at almost every house gathering I've been to, and now I have actually gotten people to do that jump on their own. So yeah, if you sleep, wake up, go download yeah, tip doing off. Doing numbers, support, it's pretty massive. And black business, man, come on, black ex- excellence. We gotta support our own. Um, Let's do it. So in closing, you want me to close, sir? What do you want me to do? Hey, man. Something else? Go ahead, bro. I got a couple things, man. First and foremost, I want to dedicate this podcast to the cool cat, Mr. Puss, man. He passed away, uh, I believe it was last week, man. He has gone on to, well, I know dogs go to, all dogs go to heaven. So do the cats? Yep. Yep. They sure do. (laughs) uh, Mr. Puss, man, is in a better place, man. Faison, uh, how long did you have him before he passed? Oh uh, man, 12, ye- 12 and a half years. That dude's oh. traveled from Miami to uh, New York to Maryland to DC, back to New York, then uh, here in Jersey. So he's been, he's a well traveled cat. Are cat years the same as dog years? 
Uh, no, no, cat, cats live longer. Oh, okay. Te technically, so it's supposed to, but. Oh, come on, man! I won't cry. I, I, I did it without crying. <laughs> 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 That's my dude, man. Y'all, if if anyone knows me. That dude has been, that's like, yo, you had that cat for forever, like from a forever. Kitten. Hey, yes. it's funny that you just played that song because that is another testament to the age group of the people running the awards last night. Yeah, because yes. that is the song that they played when they were playing the people that passed, and I was just uh, like, man, how? That's like almost like yeah, <laughs> cliche. But at the same time, yeah, the, 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 that song like, is that is the so song, that, right? Yeah. You can't you can't not play that song though, right? Sure, you can. There's something new what, that what, is what, still what's relevant. Out? There's, there's something there's, new. There's some other song. I'll wait I don't for know it. what, but there is some other. <laughs> song. <laughs> you could have just played some instrumental, some jazz instrumental or something. Yeah, anything that wasn't Cooley High. It's a Mary J song. <laughs> Mary J. Cooley High was a great song. Movie. Anything that was in Cooley High it should not still be being played for the people that passed last year. I don't agree. I disagree. Anyway, before I go to Coach K, man, remember you can catch this podcast on Apple iTunes Podcast, SoundCloud, Google Play. We need reviews. We need reviews. I know, man. Hey, listen. If you listen to this podcast right now, stop texting me how good the podcast is. <laughs> I can't do anything with these text messages. Please do us all a favor. Put it on the Facebook group. Put it on the iTunes. If you're on Google, I don't even know if you can leave reviews on Google. But do it anyway. No, you can't. Like yeah, it. Subscribe. Like it. Subscribe. Comment, subscribe. There. Subscribe. Don't Video. text. Yeah, don't, don't text, text me. Brett. Write it on the pages so other people see and understand in the in the public hairs of America can be, you know, <laughs> fortified <laughs> with all this 13th floor greatness. You yeah. feel me? Yes. Please. All right, Coach K, you got it. We started out talking about MLK, and we also talked about the NAACP. We talked about so many things today, but the common theme is starting out depending on other people, and in some cases, we're still depending on an organization or somebody or a job to come in and do something for us when the only person that we need to depend on is ourselves is yourself. If you make the first initiative, then whatever it is you're trying to do, you'll be one step closer. So people say, take that first step, but you got to take that first step with intention and know where you want to go with that first step. Because if you take that first step out into the street and you don't move any further because you're waiting along for a ride, chances are you're going to get hit by something that ran over. So take that first step, but with the initiative and the goal of where you're trying to get and while we're talking about the Chinese New Year, for those of you who your New Year's resolution has already gone out the window, you have another chance today to start over. Just say shishini, and we're going to run forward with it, with your next opportunity that you have. That's thank you in Chinese. So thank you for the opportunity to once again restart your commitment and realize that you can still achieve whatever it was that you wanted to do. And it starts with you. Tom Origato, Mr. Roboto. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But that's it here, ladies and gentlemen. We're done on the 13th floor where the furniture isn't always the best, but the views are amazing. Three. Now, it's your time for Jay Dace encourages. Yeah.